But of course, this put a completely different twist to our, uh, our investigation. Of the yes, this is a pretty incredible operation. Fox 9's Bab Santos is with us now after speaking with the Coast Guard members. Something unthinkable just happened on the edge of North America, a place most consider permanent, ancient, and unyielding. Lake Superior shifted, a movement so unimaginable, so colossal, that scientists across the United States and Canada are stunned into silence. Satellite sensors, sonar buoys, and ground-based instruments all recorded it. North America's greatest lake, an inland sea that has endured for a billion years, is moving. What's causing the world's largest freshwater lake to stir after such a long slumber? In recent weeks, a procession of climatic anomalies has played out across the Great Lakes. Lake Superior, the largest of them all, made headlines with a dramatic sight as its waters turned a startling red between Canada and the USA. A surreal event that caught the attention of everyone along the lake shore. Satellite images captured the entire basin seemingly rising and falling as if the earth beneath was pulsing with a silent, invisible heartbeat. Sonar readings tracked subtle but distinct heat blooms well below the surface. Meanwhile, shoreline towns from Duluth to Ashland faced vanishing water and roaring surges, unusual phenomena that left local witnesses deeply unsettled. To many, Lake Superior is more than just a body of water. It stands as a boundary between nations, between geological epochs, and between the conceivable and the unimaginable. For centuries, it has been unwavering, undisturbed by human activity. But now, on a scale no dam or breakwater could possibly control, the lake itself seems in motion. What could have triggered this sudden agitation? Could the forces beneath the Earth's crust hold the answer? Or is something else at work? Perhaps connected to climate change or the ancient geological scars deep under the basin? And if the largest of the Great Lakes is truly shifting, what does that mean for the people, the land, and the future of North America? Is it possible that the Earth is pulling itself apart beneath our feet, beginning with the greatest lake of them all? Chapter 1. The Pulse Beneath the Waters The first whispers of change came not from the surface, but deep below. Even before news headlines broke, satellites orbiting hundreds of miles overhead were quietly registering strange patterns. A subtle, cyclical signal pulsed through the crust beneath Lake Superior, a gentle uplift, followed by subsidence, on a timescale of several months. It was as though the Earth itself was breathing beneath the ancient basin. Researchers reviewing interferometric synthetic aperture radar, in SAR data, were among the first to spot it. The ground between Duluth and Thunder Bay, normally solid and immutable, was flexing. Within a year, this deformation stretched for hundreds of miles, though it was almost imperceptible. Fractions of a centimetre here, a few millimetres there, all adding up to a shift never before measured across the lake's solid bedrock. At first, scientists wondered if this was simply a seismic quirk, a random tremor from the Earth's depths. But the pattern persisted, marked by an eerie regularity reminiscent of cycles not seen since the great earthquakes of ancient geologic time. Soon, sonar arrays anchored on the Canadian shield reported more oddities. A slow periodic bloom of slightly warmer water rising from the deep basin. Not a volcano, not a hot spring, but a broad, low-level pulse of heat. What could tie together uplift, subsidence, and underwater warmth. Geologists looked again at old maps and were confronted with the mid-continent Rift, an ancient, billion-year-old scar that runs beneath the basin, nearly having torn the continent in two eons ago. For generations, it was considered extinct, but now modern data suggest a residual geologic activity, faint but real. As word spread, experts asked, is Lake Superior's shifting floor a warning sign, evidence that ancient buried forces are stirring? And if the ground is truly shifting, what other surprises might emerge? Chapter 2. Crimson Warnings – When the Lake Turned Red The most striking sign reached the public dramatically, displayed not beneath the water but across its glimmering surface. On September 16, 2025, dawn revealed a bizarre and unsettling sight. 
Lake Superior had turned red between the borders of Canada and the USA. From Thunder Bay's rocky beaches to Duluth's industrial shoreline, the water appeared like a wound opened in the earth and sunrise caught in liquid form. Satellite imagery corroborated on-the-ground reports, showing a broad, red-tinted stain stretching from the lake's centre toward both Canadian and American shores. Speculation spread quickly. Was it an algal bloom? The water was too cold. Conditions were inhospitable for the most common red-producing algae. Pollution was unlikely. No spills were reported and tests came back clean. As the hours wore on, geologists and meteorologists combed through atmospheric and satellite data looking for answers. The most likely explanation turned out to be a seash, a rare phenomenon in which powerful winds and a sudden atmospheric pressure drop set the lake oscillating, pushing water out of shallow bays, then sloshing it back in massive surges. Storms from the northwest triggered a meteor tsunami, which then stirred up iron-rich sediment from the deepest reaches of the basin. These minerals, usually locked on the bottom, were thrust to the surface, tinting the water red. This was not the first time Lake Superior had seen a seizure, but the effect and sheer scale were unprecedented in living memory. There was more. Embedded in the upwelled sediments, subtle increases in temperature could be found detected by thermal imaging satellites. These so-called heat anomalies were modest, just enough to disturb minerals on the bottom. For perhaps the first time, the lake's response wasn't purely a result of weather, it was a merging of atmospheric turmoil and geologic stirring beneath. As the red faded, locals were left awed and uneasy. I've never seen anything like it, said one resident. While meteorologists described a rare atmospheric event, geologists began to wonder, was this just Lake Superior's response to exceptional weather or a symptom of slow changes taking place below? Chapter 3. The Seisha. When water flees the... Sure. The next disruption arrived without warning. In the pre-dawn hours, a powerful sequence of oscillations shivered through the water. Along the Ashland, Wisconsin waterfront, fishermen watched in disbelief as the water retreated from the harbour, grounding boats on wet sand. Minutes later, it surged back, flooding the docks and battering the shoreline. Between Duluth and Salt St. Marie Marie, warning sirens blared as sensors picked up rapid water level fluctuations, levels plunging and then rebounding within minutes. A phenomenon so unusual it drew comparisons to tsunamis, though the cause was atmospheric, not seismic. Scientists got to work analysing the data. The event was not a conventional tide, but a seiche, a whole lake oscillation similar to water sloshing in a giant bathtub, amplified by a combination of intense wind, steep drops in barometric pressure, and, according to some GPS data, a subtle concurrent shift in the Earth's crust below the lake. This violent oscillation was the most powerful recorded in decades, but again, not without precedent. Lake Superior's size makes it susceptible to such events, especially during major storms. Researchers cautioned that while seaches themselves are natural and well-documented, the frequency, intensity and interaction with potential crustal changes were notable. Climate change is pushing the weather across the Great Lakes toward greater extremes, including more powerful storms and sharper atmospheric pressure shifts, which in turn may increase the frequency of such events. As the lake stilled, observers reflected on how much water and energy had moved in so little time. Was Lake Superior long a symbol of stability, becoming suddenly more volatile? Chapter 4. The rift that wouldn't die long before cities or even forests, a catastrophic rift nearly tore North America in half. Known as the Mid-Continent Rift, this ancient scar runs thousands of kilometres beneath the lake, from Kansas up to Lake Superior, a frozen record of an age when the continent almost split. For generations, geologists considered the rift extinct, covered by billions of tons of rock and soil. Yet, recent studies using seismic tomography, thermal imaging and satellite gravity sensors have raised new questions. These investigations reveal subtle but persistent heat anomalies beneath the basin and surprising indications of density shifts in the crust under Lake Superior. In some places, small fractures have appeared in deep underwater trenches, cracks where none were noted before. 
While these findings do not constitute direct evidence that the rift is reactivating, many geologists agree that the complex interplay between lingering tectonic stresses and climate-driven changes could be at work. The rift, it appears, is not entirely dead. Fossil heat and deep fractures still define the region. What would it mean if slow, deep-seated energy in the rift zone is gradually altering conditions in the overlying crust and in Lake Superior itself? Chapter 5 Heat Blooms in the Abyss Even as the water surged and the earth flexed, another subtle yet troubling signal became apparent. Far below the surface, modern sensors began detecting patches of anomalously warm water within the basin. At first, these were easily dismissed, just a few degrees above normal, but the pattern grew more pronounced, captured by satellites, underwater gliders, and research buoys. These were the so-called heat blooms, zones where water temperature rose for unclear reasons, stubbornly mapped over the deepest sections near rift scars. The timing of these blooms sometimes matched cycles of crustal flexing observed in satellite data. Sampling expeditions confirmed the warmth and found unfamiliar mineral signatures, traces of elements typically buried deep within the bedrock. Did this mean deep earth energy is leaking upward through ancient faults? Or are there chemical reactions occurring at the rock-water interface in response to stress? Scientists caution that small temperature anomalies in deep, cold lakes like Superior can have outsized effects, influencing circulation, ecosystem dynamics, and even the structural stability of the lake bed. While the warmth is not dangerous in itself, it could indicate an increase in geothermal gradients or subtle tectonic disturbance, both of which would have long-term ramifications for both water chemistry and the stability of adjacent land. If the heart of the lake is truly warming from below, does this foreshadow a slow change, that the crust is softening, or at least becoming more dynamic? Chapter 6 Storms, Climate, and the Great Unraveling While ancient geologic activity tells one story, the atmosphere above the Great Lakes is writing another. In recent years, the region has been battered by more intense storms, destabilized pressure systems, and erratic rainfall, sometimes drought, sometimes torrential downpour. Recent research warns that these shifts are pushing lakes across the circumpolar north toward thresholds not seen for centuries. In Greenland, climate change has driven some pristine lakes across a tipping point. The Great Lakes, given their scale and interconnectedness, are at risk of similar disruptions. In September 2025, one of the fiercest tempests in memory swept across Lake Superior. Wind energy reached levels not seen in decades, and the rapid drop in atmospheric pressure drove the meteor tsunami that helped trigger the lake's crimson event and a record-setting seish. Meteorologists and climatologists agree that warming climates can create the perfect recipe for such supercharged events, as more heat in the atmosphere amplifies wind energy and pressure swings. Crucially, each time such a storm assails the basin, ground-based sensors pick up crustal movements, however slight, and the ongoing interplay between recent weather and deep geology becomes ever more apparent. It appears that climate may indeed be lighting fuses long buried beneath layers of stone. Chapter 7 – False Alarms – Real Dangers In the midst of these astonishing signals, a parallel drama unfolds online. Social media posts regularly circulate faked images of enormous sinkholes in Lake Superior or fictitious collapses near Thunder Bay, fueling panic. Yet, thorough investigation reveals these to be fabrications, at least for the time being. No verifiable dramatic sinkholes or vast shoreline collapses have occurred. But beneath the surface, the basic forces that could one day cause such disasters, shifts in crustal stability, anomalous heat, and structural changes in sediment are being carefully monitored by scientists. The warning is clear. While nothing so dramatic has been recorded yet, the potential for rapid change exists when powerful geologic and climatic forces converge. Communities around the lake remain on tenterhooks, reassured by the regular calm, yet ever more aware of the possibility of change. Chapter 8 The Domino Effect – When Faults Connect Silence, in geology, is rarely just silence. Across the Midwest, faults have a rhythm. 
Every few centuries, major ruptures shake the region. The New Madrid Fault, the Real Foot Rift, seismically linked to the Great Lakes region by corridors of buried stone and ancient faults. Recent observations from GPS stations, trench studies, and satellite geodesy hint at subtle pulses of movement slowly shifting northward from the Mississippi Valley toward the Great Lakes. Some scientists at the USGS suspect that the New Madrid Seismic Zone, the Mid-Continent Rift, and the Great Lakes Faults are not entirely isolated, but connected via a complex and poorly understood network. Every tremor along the Mississippi, every minor slip near the Arkansas-Illinois border, feeds energy into this network. What if the apparent stirring beneath Lake Superior is not an isolated curiosity, but a small part of a continent-wide tension? Each strand pulling on the next. If the system is truly interconnected, then each movement could increase strain elsewhere, a domino effect waiting for a critical trigger. Chapter 9. Red Alert Over Deep Water The unease deepened with a headline. Lake Superior just shifted. Scientists are stunned. Shortly thereafter, emergency planners in communities like Duluth, Thunder Bay, and Marquette reviewed new data sets with growing concern. An internal bulletin labeled Increased Deformation Risk in the Lake Superior Basin made its rounds among agencies, noting that measured strain in the crust beneath the lake was now above historical baselines. Every new satellite pass confirmed fresh, shallow bulges, the surface rising and sinking in broad, gentle cycles. Thermal imaging confirmed more pronounced heat patches at known fault intersections, notably near the northern shore and central basin. Micro tremors, a hallmark of subtle tectonic movement, were tracked echoing away from rift zones. Geochemical teams found new indicators, rare earth traces, nickel and cobalt, leaking from underwater fractures, suggesting slow convection of mineral-rich fluids from deep below. Public statements attempted to reassure, no immediate risk, the system is under constant observation. But, internally, engineers ran simulations in which sage surges, sediment landslides, and water-level oscillations all combined into potential hazards for ports and communities. Even if the odds of a catastrophic event remain low, the mere fact that ancient Lake Superior is in motion has upended old assumptions. If a body of water considered so permanent can move, what else might soon follow across the heart of the continent? Chapter 10 the awakening of the lake. The reality of change on Lake Superior builds slowly, with most signs detectable only to the watchful and the wary. The lake doesn't roar in a single instant. It sends signals, strange dawn colors, a quivering pier, silent pulses from below. Across the region, harbor masters and fishermen monitor new cracks in old docks and low tremors in the rock, too minor for concern, but persistent. Fish collect in the shallows as the undercurrents warm and sediment clouds thicken. Thermal satellites record micro-oscillations in water temperature that hint at something stirring out of sight. In coffee shops, stories re-emerge of the lake as a living force, capable of moods, tempests, and cryptic portents. Some recall legends in which the lake was said to sleep for centuries, then awaken in times of great change. Now, with every fresh signal, however muted, a question surfaces with the morning breeze. Are these events random or a message from the deep? Is Lake Superior's red morning a beginning, not an end? What if the movement now measured, by satellites, by sensors, by every vigilant eye along the shore, signals a slow turning point? And if so, will any of the shores, towns, or forests that rim the ancient basin ever be quite the same? What would it mean for the entire continent if North America's greatest lake is the first to respond to the planet's shifting balance between Earth and sky? The evidence is impossible to ignore. The ground has moved. The water has answered. Scientists, for now, remain cautious but unmistakably concerned. And humanity, watching from the edge of the world's largest lake, is left with the ultimate question. When the ancient lake truly awakens, what comes next?